Well, they need to pause them today because as of yesterday, if they're not uh, certified, they, if they haven't gone through the process, they're operating illegally, and we will ticket them. We will uh, impound cars. In, their regu or in this note, they said the regulation from the city and trying to work with the city was simply too onerous, too much. I don't believe that because Uber is working through the process. They're bringing their, their drivers in, both Uber Black and, and Uber X will be operating in Houston. Uh, Lyft needs to, if they're not going to operate legally, they need to shut their app down because they are putting their drivers in jeopardy of prosecution. You mentioned you needed to testify possibly in a, a trial, raised a lot of eyebrows. What can you tell us? Well, I haven't been called yet, and so the, <laughs> I don't know whether I will be called or not. It, it's not rare, but it has happened uh, to me, and uh, that's why we have a city legal department that's over there trying to make sure I don't have to go up and testify. But as a, as a courtesy, one would expect that uh, a, a Houston judge would allow me to continue to you know, conduct a council meeting before I would be called. Do you tell us what it is in regards to? It's the um, Pigeon versus Parker. And I think Jared Woodfill is making a cottage industry of filling <laughs> the city of Houston, and it happens to be one of his. Uh, in a different, um, you know, uh, still political, though, do you have any thoughts about the election uh, outcome? My team lost. <laughs> okay. I'm sad. Okay. I mean, I mean truly. Uh, yeah. But yeah. I don't. I've, been in the political process for a long time. I have lost races. I haven't lost them in a very long time, but it's it's no fun to lose. But you pick yourself up, and uh, then we all refocus on what's best for uh, Harris County, what's best for the state of Texas. Speaking, speaking of Uber and Lyft, I know there have been discussions about, obviously, um, adding those services to the airport. What is going into those discussions, and when do you think that any sort of decision would be reached? Well, we actually had the proposal on the agenda right. for today. Council members delayed it for a week, so we'll know we'll be passed next week and uh, we'll go forward. The goal is to allow Uber to operate not as in a in a way that is detrimental to the existing cab service at our airports, but to allow them to operate uh, on on their app. Uh, by using technology to create a geofence around the airport to allow a, an uh, on-airport grounds but not actually in the terminal site for each airport where Uber drivers could stop, turn off their engines and wait. We don't want anybody circulating through the, ar around the, the terminals. Uh, we, don't, we don't need the traffic, we don't need the air pollution. And so we, we, we have an off-site lot, so it's similar to a cell phone lot for people, but with a geofence around it so that the driver, the Uber driver in this case, since Lyft has chosen not to participate, the Uber driver will only be able to, to take their, to, to make their connection with their passenger while they're in the uh, off-site lot. Got it. And as for Lyft, I know you said that if they're not going to comply, yeah, it's not. To... Uh, it's not up to me to. Uh, I know that representatives from Lyft have been calling me and pleading with me to take uh, unilateral action. I cannot do that. We have an ordinance. Several of the things that they are asking for, I had indicated to them I would support at the, the council table and would vote for. Council didn't pass it. But in terms of um, them not being able to operate anymore, if they can't gonna... operate, they have. They have chosen not to. There are maybe some minor changes we can make to make it more efficient, but they are objecting to a full fingerprint background check. Mm -hmm. They are objecting to having to do a warrant check through the City of Houston Municipal Courts. I don't want to get into a car with someone. I don't want my daughters to get into a car with someone who I am not convinced to the best of my ability has been vetted through law enforcement. Yeah. So they wouldn't even be able to operate in just a donation way, right? They just straight up wouldn't be able to operate? Well, actually, as they have been thus far, you could operate just on a donation. Okay. But the way Uber says they operate is a donation all along. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think that that would be a fiction trying to get around our ordinance, and we're going to continue to, to, to prosecute under our ordinance. Yeah. Yeah. Just a, as a practical matter, oh, sorry, I, I, uh, related. I, I really, I have, I've been yeah. late for a number of days. We, we okay. mentioned the court case that was occurring this morning. We got 
somewhere that, that in order to come down and preventing the city from extending uh, benefits uh, to... I have no idea. I have been I have been here. I have not conferred with the legal department. I will tell you that uh, I have been under an order from a federal judge with no recourse to extend benefits. So if there's uh, you know some kind of conflicting ruling, that has to be sorted out. But I need to I need to sit with my uh, with my people. Uh, one question on the there's a there's a parks item that was delayed for a week today. There's one one point two million out of the, the dedicated fund for the lot on, on West Timer. I know that there we we reported it a year ago that typically this money wasn't used to acquire land. Now, now it is being used to acquire land, um, but for ten thousand square feet, that, that, that's a lot of money. You know, is this the the, the, right the side? ordinance? And it actually it passed before my time as as mayor, so I don't know what the thinking was around the ordinance. But I, you know, it's a beneficial ordinance. As we do new development, we begin to set aside parks and green space. One of the challenges, though, is that the areas that we, we, the, the city is divided into sectors. And as development occurs, those really hot development areas, they're throwing off more money than slower development areas. But just by virtue of the fact that they're throwing off a lot of money, their hot development area means that the prices go up and your dollars don't go as far in terms of acquiring uh, park space. It so happens that in the in the sector that we're talking about, which is in Councilmember Cohen's district, there was a lot on Lower Westheimer that, through the normal process, the uh, Parks Department identified as a potential park space. Because Lower Westheimer is a uh, it's a commercial area, and and the the, the question Councilmember and I had a number of questions is to and so what we we're going to do now is. There's a timeliness issue in spending the money. And so we are going to do another survey for that sector to see if there are any other potential sites that would make a good city park. Uh, if not, this is a legitimate uh, use of the funds and appropriate use of funds. This just would be an expensive park on a commercial strip. So we want to, if we're going to build a park, we want to be, it to be one that would be used. I know there's some discussion.